Okay, this one's been a long time coming. I know quite a few of you have asked me over the past few months to put together a video on how you can add HA into your RGB data. And that's what this video is about. My name is Rich and you're watching Deep Space Astro. Alright, as of time of recording, I'm running the latest version of Ciro 1.2.1. Before we get started, I want to talk about our folder structures here. We're going to be creating two stacks, one for the RGB, one for the HA. I have a directory here called Flame, Horsehead, Running Man, Orion, because those are the four objects in the image that we're working with today. Within that folder, I have a folder for narrowband data, which is the session that I shot with my Alex Stream filter. And then I have one called RGB, which was shot with no filters at all. So it's straight up RGB data. So we're going to be using scripts provided by Cyril today. And as usual, they require all of your calibration frames. So in my narrow band, I have biases, darks, flats, and lights. And just so you guys know, my lights for narrow band that I shot with the LX Stream, I ended up with 29 of them at 300 seconds a piece. And then RGB, same thing biases darks flats and lights and i have 97 images at 120 seconds a piece so before we jump over into serial i'm going to create an additional directory here just to keep things clean just going to call it prep you can call it whatever you want and then we're going to jump over to serial we're going to set our working directory first to our rgb data click open and we're simply just going to come in and run the osc pre-processing script against that rgb data let that run. It'll take a few minutes and then we'll move on. Okay, our stack is complete. You can see over in the console that one took four minutes, 25 seconds. So we'll just jump back over into the working directory real quick just to show you. So we were working in RGB and there is our RGB stack right there. Our next step is we want to stack the HA data that we acquired with the LX Stream filter. So we're going to change our working directory in Cyril. We're currently in the RGB working directory and we're just going to move over to my narrow band folder. Click open, come up to scripts. This time, instead of running the OSC pre-processing script, we're gonna use one of the included scripts with Serial called OSC Extract HA. This will stack and register just like the OSC pre-processing does, but it will leave you with a single monochrome image of the HA data that it extracted from your session. So simply just run that script and wait for it to finish. Okay, so now our HA stack is complete. Again, if we jump over into our current working directory, which this one is the narrow band, there is our single HA stacked and registered result file. So back in the serial, and now we're gonna change our working directory once more, but this time we're going to set it to the directory that we created at the beginning that way our next few steps that we do all the files that are created will be created in that prep directory it's just a way to keep things organized for myself so i don't have to hunt around in the process directory for everything so prep directory set as our working directory and we want to split the rgb image into three separate channels so we're going to click the open button we're going to browse over to our rgb working directory and we're going to select our result file this is our RGB image in linear. If you want, you don't need to, it's not a requirement. I'm just showing you click auto stretch. So you can see uh, a good visualization of, of what the final image could look like. So now we're going to come up to image processing, extraction, and split channels in the red, I'm going to hit R in the green G in the blue B. And you want to stick to these naming conventions because there's another script we're going to be running here in a minute that requires the files to be named R, G, and B. So make sure that you stick to this naming convention when you do your extraction. Click apply, watch over in the console. It should finish up pretty quickly. And once it's done, click close. So now if we jump over into our prep directory, there's our three channel files. Before moving to the next step, we need one more file, which is our HA stack. So we're gonna go over to the narrow band folder and select my HA file. And we're gonna cut that from this location, go back into prep, and we're gonna paste it there. So now we have all four of our files. Now to register and align all four of these files together, we're gonna to use yet another script that comes with Cyril up in the scripts menu called RGB composition. Now I wanna pause here and talk about this for a second. First of all, the RGB composition script is the script I was referring to when we did the extraction and I said that you need to have an RG and B file in your working directory for that script to work. What's going to happen is, is it's going to look for those three files and then it'll register and align those files together and give us an RGB.fit file. We don't need that file. We'll, we will be deleting that. You'll see that here in a few minutes. But the other thing the script does is if you add additional files into the working directory, 
once it finds the RGMB, it'll also include anything else that's in that directory as part of the registration process. So in our case, we have our HA data set in there too. So all four of these will be registered and aligned together. Now, what I want to talk about is, again, I'm jumping ahead, but I'm, I just want to be clear as to why I'm taking this approach. If we come up to image processing and go into RGB compositing, this is the tool we'll be using to, to, to build our final image with. And it also has an alignment method that you can use on it, but it will not align your images if you have any rotation at all between the files. So in my case, my RGB data compared to my HA data, there is rotation. So even though it doesn't throw an error and it says it's complete, you end up with shadowing, right? So for example, if I look at the horse head, once I pushed it through using the alignment function of this tool, there's a little bit of a shadow of a horse head right above it. So it doesn't support images that have been rotated even slightly, but I've been told by the developers, newer versions of it, future versions of it will support that. So for now, you can try to do the alignment this way, but I'm going to say it's probably just the best bet. Just to always use the script that way, whether it is rotation or not, it'll do the registration and the alignment for you. So hope that makes sense. But to get back to where we're at, our working directory, our, our prep directory, which is our working directory, has our RGB and our HA data in there. So all we need to do now is come up to scripts and hit RGB composition. And if you watch it over in the console, you'll see it's doing pretty much the same thing that it was doing with the OSC pre-processing script with registration and all that stuff. So it's pretty quick, only four files on my machine, five seconds. So again, just to keep you guys on track and show you what's going on in the background, back into our prep directory, there's our RGB file that that script just created that we don't need. There's our HA file that we brought in to be included in the registration, Neither of these two files are needed at this point. So just to keep things clean, I'm going to delete them. It also created a process folder. If you open that up, you'll see our symbolic links, shortcuts effectively in Windows to our original files. And then down here on the bottom, these four files that are prefixed with the R. These are our registered files. So these are the four we're going to be working with. Now, the first question you may have is, well, how do I know which one is R, G, B, or HA? And you can figure that out by opening up your colors conversion text. When you open this up, you can see the blue file was created and appended with a number, which is one. So this, this is our mapping. This is what we're going to use to reference in as we build our composition. So we know the blue is one, the green is two, the R is three, and the HA is four. So now we are going to jump over to image processing back into the RGB compositing tool that we were talking about previously. And we're going to load up our layers here to build our image. So we're going to start with red, just click on the box where it says none, go into your process directory, bring up your little mapping file, locate red, and red is file number three. So we're going to come down to the registered files. And we're going to select file number three for the red channel. Same thing for green. Hit the process, use your conversion file to see where the green is at, and it's number two. And then the same thing for the blue. Again, process directory, look at the blue, and it's number one. So open up registered file number one. So at this point, we're back to what looks to be the same image that we just split out and recombined. But the difference is because we ran this script up here, we're all registered and aligned, right? So that's the reasoning for that. The last step is we're going to add our HA image as our luminance channel. So we're going to click on that none box, go into the process. I know it's image four, right? It's the last of four. But again, if you lost track of what you're doing, Here's our HA file, and it shows us in the conversion file that it's file number four. So we're going to come down and select registered file number four. It automatically enables the tick box for use luminance, and that is our image with HA added into the RGB. You can go back and forth by simply unticking your luminance layer. So that would be our before, and that would be our after. So Go ahead and click close to close the image compositing tool. And we're going to save this as a 32 bit fit and the name doesn't matter. You can call it what you want. Since I have four major um, objects in this image, I'm just going to go flame, horse head, running man and Orion. Click save. Make sure you're going to 32 bit floating point because we are in auto stretch. You will get this message that the view is not in linear. It's just telling you that, hey, what you're seeing on your screen if you're expecting it to look like this in the file that you're saving, you're wrong. 
<laughs> so, but we know that we're working in linear. Just click save anyway. If you were to do the save while you're in linear mode, that message wouldn't even pop up. So just be aware of that. Now at this point, if you need to, or you want to, this is where you would do your cropping. So we can come up just for stacking artifacts. I don't have too much of a problem with this image. This one stacked nice and clean for me, but just to go through the process, draw your selection where you want to crop, right click and hit crop. Again, hit save. From here on out, this is just normal processing, right? Again, if you've been using Serial for a while, you know how to do all this, but I'm going to go through it. We're going to start with background extraction. Now you can use background extraction that's built into Serial. Nothing wrong with it, but ever since Graxpert has come out with their AI interpolation method, I've been using that to do my background extraction because it's simple. It's brainless. It just, and it works great. But if you want to do it yourself, you can. But again, I'm going to do the background extraction in Graxpert. So We'll get Graxpert loaded up here and the latest version of Graxpert again with the built-in AI they color-coded the buttons so it's really just three clicks so we're going to hit load image up here we're going to bring in our fhro.fit file Graxpert will do a little bit of a stretch for us so we can see what's going on make sure your interpolation method is in AI when it's in AI you don't need to lay any samples down that's what makes this so nice and just hit calculate background and that's it our gradients have been cleaned up in the image if you want to you can come up top here where it says processed and if you select background it'll show you the gradients that it removed so processed again that's where we're at we're going to come down here and say save process i'm just going to leave the default name that graxpert gives it which is the original file name and then they append graxpert to the end of it that's fine click save when it's done saving go ahead and close graxpert we don't need it anymore back into serial we're going to open up that Graxpert file and now we're going to do some color correction on it, right? So we're going to come up to image processing, color calibration, and photometric color calibration. All the data that's required for this tool to work is in my fits header of the image. So I'm just going to click OK, close when it's done. And as usual, we're going to remove the green noise from the image. I can see a little bit of a tint in the background. So image processing remove green noise, and then just click apply. Close when it's finished, and our image is now color corrected. Now, because I like to process my images without the stars, we're gonna do just that. We're gonna remove the stars from this image. So image processing, star processing, and then star net star removal. Because again, we are still linear. We're gonna tick restretch linear image and make sure generate star mask is selected. Click execute and give it a minute to complete. Okay, star net's done. There's our starless image. Before we move forward, I'm going to jump into our prep directory again, find our star mask that was just created. And again, just to keep things clear, I'm going to rename it to stars. Back over into Serial, and now it's time to start stretching and doing all the post-processing that we usually do. So I'm going to take us out of auto stretch and go into linear. Come up to image processing and generalize hyperbolic stretch. And there's, you know, again, this this is all preference, right? So however you do your stretching, whatever the final image looks like, however you like it to look, that's up to you. I'm just going to run through real quick and do some quick processing on it. What I generally do is an aggressive stretch in the beginning, right? My local stretch intensity, I crank all the way over to the right. And then I start stretching. I bring it over pretty far just to see the data that's in there so I can see all the HA structure that I'm looking to pull out of the image. And I'll start backing it down. And what I'm looking for is the point where the stretch isn't showing me, showing me any more data. And all that it's doing is brightening the background. And I, I don't want to brighten the background any more than I have to just to pull the data out. So get it to where I like it. Hit apply. And then my symmetry point, you can either click on the graph. What I generally do is just draw a little selection over certain areas of the image. And then hit the eyedropper to set my symmetry point. Local stretch intensity at this point, I go about two thirds of the way over and again, start stretching just a little bit at a time. Now, during this whole process, this is the area that I'm that I'm interested in, right? The horse head and the flame, all this H8 that's around the horse head. As we're making these adjustments, I'm going to be blowing out the core of Orion, but that's OK. We can tamper that down a little bit in Photoshop so it's not as bright. But again, just little steps to bring everything up. I still have my selection set, so I'm going to use that same symmetry point. This time I'm going to leave my local stretch intensity about a third of the way over and just do a little bit more stretching again just to try to bring the brightness up and the contrast and things. You can also play with the local stretch intensity. Again, this is kind of like a contrast. You go too far, it's really going to make things a mess. Again, it's all preference stuff, so just play with it, get it to where you like it. Hit apply when you're happy. I'm going to draw a selection over here now in a little bit darker area and set that as my symmetry point. 
again leaving local stretch at about a third of the way over just bring this up a little bit and as we're doing this you can see our histogram is moving away from the left side of the graph but we'll take care of that in a minute here without any symmetry point set We'll give it a little bit of a stretch just where it sits. Again, I'm just looking at all my structures, trying not to brighten the background too much. Click apply. I think that looks good for the purpose of the video. Again, tighten up this left side of our histogram. I'm going to change our type of stretch to linear stretch. This is our black point. Zoom in just a little bit using the plus button so I can see my data. And I'm just going to move this slider until the histogram gets closer to the edge. If you watch the image, you'll see how it'll start darkening things out without actually taking away any of the data. We're not clipping any of the data. Click apply. And then usually I go back into the hyperbolic stretch. And again, without setting a symmetry point, just give it a little bit of a bump. All right, we're gonna click apply and close. And I'm gonna call that good. The next step is to do some cleanup and tweaking in Photoshop and Topaz Denoise. So to do so, first we're gonna click save to save the fit file, just in case we have to go back to it. Then we're going to click the save current image button and I'm going to change this to TIFF or you can just change the file extension to TIFF. It'll recognize that you want a TIFF file if you do that as well. I'm going to leave the name as it is because it's going to be the only TIFF file I have. Click save. We're going to go to 16 bit because camera raw, which is one of the functions in Photoshop I'm going to be using, requires it to be 16 bit and then click save. Come back into our prep directory, look for our TIFF file, and we're just gonna open that up in Photoshop. First thing I like to do is to check my levels. And I do that by coming up to image, adjustments, and then levels. Now you can make your adjustment here on the left-hand side while you're in the RGB state, but I generally check each one of the channels. I'm looking to make sure that there's no blank space in between the arrow on the left and the histogram data on the right. Jump in the green, and that's what I'm talking about. There's, there's space in there, so I'm gonna move this over right before that line, right where our data starts. And then we'll check the blue, same thing with the blue. Dial that in to close up those gaps. Click OK, and our channels are pretty much leveled out now. Now we're gonna come up into Filter and Camera Raw Filter, and I start first over here under the light section. This will do two things for us. I like to play with the contrast first, and usually it's just a little, right? I mean, go, go extreme one way or the other, get a feel for how the, the actual tool is working, but I give it a little bit of contrast. And then the rest of these settings will help us tame down the core of the Orion and make, get that looking a little bit better. But we got to keep an eye over on this side of the image where the horse head is as well, because these settings affect the entire image, but you can find a nice little balance. Um, so with the highlights, if I start pulling the highlights down, you can see the core of the Orion Nebula is starting to dim down. It's still blown out a little bit in the center, but it's a lot more pleasing to the eye, I think, when it's dialed down like that. But we also dimmed the whole image, so it's not as bright over here. But just going back and forth with some of these sliders and seeing what they do for your image, you see I lift the shadows up and it's bringing a little bit of brightness into here, kind of like a contrast against them. And then again with the whites, we can do the same thing. And what I like about the whites is if you watch around the horse head here, right on this ridge behind it. As I bring up the whites, you can see how it's just making that area pop without making everything else really bright. Play with the blacks, same thing. Watch your background with the blacks. It tends to brighten the background up too much sometimes, so just a little bit. And then once it looks decent, you can always come back and dial down the highlights just a little bit more because what we just did affected the core. You know, again with the whites, it's just a balance. Get it to where you like it. But you can see, I mean, all all this dust around here, this huge HA area, this is all because of the all extreme filter. And then we blended it in as the luminance channel. And blending it in as the luminance channel kind of takes away a little bit of that red. We can add more of it back in, but just think about a color palette, right? If you've got red paint and white paint and you mix them together, you're going to start leaning towards the pink side, right? So we can take care of that a little bit. You don't want to go too crazy. You don't want to oversaturate, but that's where we're going to go next. So if we come over into our color mixer and come down to saturation, you know, you have a you have your hues, you have your saturation, you have your luminance. Now you can play with these sliders. If I grab the red and move it over, you can see it's it's brightening it up. And that's way too much, obviously. You can spend all day long tweaking on this stuff. If you make an adjustment change and you don't like it, just double click the arrow and it'll reset for you. What I like to do when I'm playing with the saturation is instead of playing with the sliders, I use the targeted adjustment tool over here. So if I click this and then bring my mouse over the color, you see those two color dots? It's showing me the colors that it's found in it. Press my mouse button, my left mouse button down, it gives me a slider where I can make adjustments just by moving my mouse back and forth. So I'm actually being selective on the colors and where I want to tweak them. And if you watch over on the sliders over here, 
you can see the reds and the orange moved based on where I was making my adjustments. So instead of me moving the red, moving the orange or yellows or greens or blues or whatever's in the image, this kind of does it for you automatic. So you can play around with making adjustments that way just by using that adjustment tool. When come down into the orange, maybe we can back this down just a little bit. Not too too much you know just play around with it get it to where you like it i'm focusing on the horse head but i'm also glancing up at the orion once in a while you can see the running man doesn't look that great and that's because of the aja is luminance but again i was really focusing on wanting to be over here with this stuff and like i said you can also play with the luminance as well right sometimes turning the red luminance down will get things a little bit darker for you a little bit brighter depending on your preference and there's an adjustment picker on this one as well so i could do the same thing with that to adjust my luminance and i think that one needs too much so i'm going to be happy with that jump over to color now and just bump my vibrance up just a little bit and i'm gonna call that good for now we're gonna come back into this after we run it through some denoising with topaz and then i'm gonna come up to filter topaz denoise zoom back out so we get to see the image better and once it's done updating down here in the corner this particular view on the left hand side is the original image with no denoising applied and the right hand side is with it applied you can drag this back and forth so you can look at the image on both sides right now the settings that i have in place i'm happy with but you know you can play with them they've got the presets up here that you can change if you turn off the model preferences you can increase the, the level of noise that it removes and the sharpness bring back some of the original detail just play with the sliders and the buttons till you get what you like i left just a little bit of noise in here just because anything more for noise reduction tends to kind of blur the edges of some of these structures and i don't really like that but again that's up to you so get it where you like hit apply it'll do the denoising and put the image back into photoshop for us okay back into photoshop and like i said one more time we're going to jump back into camera raw filter and we're going to go into the effects the two effects that i use generally are clarity and dehaze and use them sparingly too much and it looks way over sharpened i mean if i was to take clarity all the way over for me that that's just too crazy so i just want to bump this up just a little bit i'm watching the image just to sharpen up some of the edges a little bit and then i play a little bit with the dehaze so just to show you if you go all the way to the right really darkens the image and takes out all the haze that it found does the opposite if you go to the left so we're going to go to the right just a little bit just playing with it back and forth see what kind of results that i get i like that there we're going to click ok and we're going to call our post processing in photoshop complete so we're going to come up by all and just save it we're done with photoshop so we're going to shut that down back into serial here's the original image that we took in the photoshop we're going to open up that TIFF now, which is right here. And you can see as it changes the difference that we have between the two images. Before we add the stars back in, we need a fit file created of this thing. So this, this is still our TIFF, right? So we're going to come over to our save button and we're going to call this one FHRO underscore PS for Photoshop. So we're going to click save. We're going to go back to 32 bit floating point. Click save. Now we're ready to add the stars. Image processing, star processing and star recomposition. On the left-hand side, we are going to add in our fit file that we just saved. And on the right-hand side, we're going to add in our stars. Now, when I bring the stars back in, first thing I do is jump into the advanced mode. I change my color stretch model to either human weighted or even weighted. Either one generally works. You'll have a better chance of keeping the colors of your stars if you're an even weighted or human weighted. Independent channels tend to wash out the colors, end up with white stars or very muted colors. So either one, human or even weighted, you can play with it. So I'm just gonna go with human weighted for now. Um, you can stretch using modified arc sign, that's fine. I prefer to use a generalized hyperbolic transform. I feel like that gives me a little bit better results and then start stretching. Now I'm watching the image, but I'm also watching my graph. That arc starts straightening out the top. That's an indication to me that I need to move my local stretch intensity. So as I move it, you can see that line starts coming down off of the top of the image. So back and forth with them, watching the stars, see where I like them to land. I don't want to slam it to the top of the graph. Eh, it's a little bit too much, I think. I'm going to bring them back down. Again, this is all preference. So I think that looks good. We're going to hit apply. And that applies our star stretching that we just did to the image. And while we're in here, if you want, you can play around with maybe a little bit of stretching just with the default settings, just to see what it does for our image. Maybe brighten it up just a little bit. It is just stretching the starless portion of this image, right? It's not stretching the stars. We're stretching our fit file that we just pulled out of Photoshop. So hit apply when we like that. And then scroll down to black point. If you see a little bit of space, maybe you have some room to move that histogram over 
over just to darken the background ever so slightly click apply when you're done and close there's our final image it's not a saved image yet so make sure you come over and click the save button and we're going to call this one fhro final 32 bit and that's our final image. So I'm also going to save a version in JPEG so we can do a little bit of a side-by-side -side of both images processed. So just leave the name final like that. It's JPEG, so we don't have a duplicate. Hit save, and I don't know why you'd want less than 100% quality, but you have the option, <laughs> hit save. And now if I come back into my prep directory, and we'll just open this up in photos, and then I have one of just the RGB data, so we'll open this one up in photos, and put this one over here, this one over here. So there's our difference, right? Left-hand side is RGB data only. Right-hand side is the same RGB data data with the HA data added as the luminance channel. Um, I mean, without a doubt, right, you can see the difference. So let me know what you guys think. You know, my goal for this was to add that HA into my RGB data and really pull out that HA structure. And I think the process really did what I was looking for. Pretty happy with the results myself. But you know, you guys give it a shot with your data. Let me know. I'd like to take a moment to thank all of my members both here on YouTube and over on Buy Me A Coffee. If you'd like to see your name at the end of the videos, consider becoming a member. If you're a subscriber, thank you very much. If you're not, consider subscribing. Give the video like share it out and it really helps the channel grow i appreciate each and every one of you for taking the time to watch my videos this channel wouldn't be what it is without you so with that i'll see you in the next video in clear skies